Peter Powys in 1597 described a malignancy which involved the eye, the temporal bone and the cranium. He said it was filled with some substance, something like brain tissue mixed with blood and crushed stone. Later on in the 18th century, Hayes described a similar tumour in a child who presented with cat's eye in the dark. Later on in the 19th century, the same tumour was named as fungoidus hematoidus because it was highly vascular and had a fungating growth pattern. It was only during the early 1900s that the American Ophthalmologic Society adopted the term coined by Verhoff and named this tumour as retinoblastoma. So in this session, we will talk about retinoblastomas. So retinoblastoma is a primary intraocular malignant tumour in the children. Now the origin of this tumour is the neuronal progenitor cells. Now what are these neuronal progenitor cells? Now these are the primitive cells which can give rise to either neurons or even the glial tissue. So what is the etiopathogenesis of retinoblastomas? Now retinoblastomas can be either familial or sporadic. Familial means the tumours arising when there is a family history. So in familial cases, almost 40% of these are familial who inherit germline mutation of the RB1 gene. So the main defect in retinoblastoma is mutation in the RB1 gene or the retinoblastoma gene. Now these familial cases are usually associated with multiple bilateral tumours. So they can be multiple tumours and involving both the eyes. And the risk of development of other carcinomas or other sarcomas or tumours is very high in these cases. And the commonest tumour which is associated is osteosarcoma. Now what do you mean by trilateral retinoblastoma? Trilateral retinoblastoma is bilateral retinoblastoma plus another tumour that is penialoblastoma arising in the pineal gland. So that is known as trilateral retinoblastoma. Now coming to the sporadic cases. Now 60% of these retinoblastoma can be sporadic. Sporadic means there is no family history in these cases. And both retinoblastoma alleles are lost by somatic mutations. That is mutations in both the alleles occur later in life after birth. So that is familial and sporadic retinoblastoma. So now coming to the Knudsen's two-hit hypothesis. Now this was proposed by Sir Alfred Knudsen, who is an American scientist and he proposed that any tumor suppressor gene to be active, they need both the alleles to be mutated for the phenotypic change. So if the tumor suppressor gene has two alleles, both have to be mutated only then the tumour can happen. So that is the Knudsen's two-hit hypothesis. So before going into Knudsen's two-hit hypothesis, let us just see about retinoblastoma gene. So retinoblastoma gene is a gene which is involved in the causation of retinoblastomas. Now that is the first discovered tumour suppressor gene and it is present on chromosome number 13q14. Now what is the role of retinoblastoma gene? Now this gene is a negative regulator of G1S cycle, cell cycle. Now what is this G1S phase? Now the cell cycle has four phases, G1, S, G2 and M. Now retinoblastoma halts or prevents the cell from proliferating and keeps it halted in the G1S phase of the cell cycle because once the cell progresses from the G1 phase, it is bound to complete mitosis. Now for this cell cycle to function normally, there are many proteins which are needed. So we have cyclins, a group of proteins which are needed for the proliferation of cells and the associated enzymes are called cyclin dependent kinases and the inhibitors which are involved are known as cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors. Now let us just see the role of retinoblastoma. Now whenever there are growth inhibiting signals like P53, 
it will stimulate the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors so the inhibitors the growth has to be halted so cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors are stimulated which will prevent the action of cyclins now this cyclins will lead to that will lead to hypophosphorylation of the retinoblastoma gene hypophosphorylation so when it is hypophosphorylated it is active remember the retinoblastoma gene is active when it is hypophosphorylated and inactive when it is hyperphosphorylated so when active it will bind to the e2f now e2f is a transcription factor so when it binds to e2f this e2f is not freely available for transcription hence there is no transcription and no cell growth or cell proliferation at the same time when there are growth promoting signals like platelet derived growth factor or any other growth factors in such cases the cyclins are activated and the retinoblastoma is the gene is hyperphosphorylated this is the hyperphosphorylated form of retinoblastoma so in this form it fails to bind to the e2f that is the transcription factor hence this e2f is freely available for transcription and transcription goes on so that is the role of the retinoblastoma gene now let us go back to the nutsens two hit hypothesis the pathogenesis of retinoblastoma so now in sporadic form as we know there is no mutation at birth both the alleles of the gene are normal so as we see here the somatic cells of the parents the germ cells and the zygote both the alleles are completely normal and these are the somatic cells of the child later on sometime in life the first hit this is the first hit which occurs in one of the alleles then later on for the malignancy to develop remember both the alleles have to be mutated so we have to have a second hit so that is the second hit hence the development of tumor or retinoblastoma so that is how sporadic form continues so now coming to the familial form so in familial form as we see here one gene is already mutated so mutant rb gene is already present in the progeny at the birth then later on sometime in life so this becomes the first hit then later on sometime in life we have the second hit and the development of tumor or retinoblastoma so one thing we should clearly remember is as we see here familial forms the tumor express themselves very early or the tumors manifest very early in age and that's a sporadic form which takes a little longer time for manifestation so this is the nutsens two hit hypothesis for retinoblastomas now coming to the clinical features now how do these patients present to you with the main the median age is 2 years so remember most of the patients are children it presents in children it is a tumor of childhood the patients may present with poor vision or strabismus that means they are not able to see in one direction the both the eyes do not see in one direction at the same time there can be pain and tenderness of the affected eye sometimes the patients may present with proptosis that is bulging of the eyeball it can be unifocal that is one one tumor may be there or multifocal multi multiple tumors can be there within the eyeball unilateral or bilateral and one very important finding is the cat's eye reflex that is whitish hue in the pupil it just resembles how a cat looks at you in the dark the whitish hue you see in the cat's eye that is a very characteristic feature in retinoblastoma and that is also known as leucocoria so these are the clinical features of retinoblastoma so that is how that is the characteristic cat's eye reflex or leucocoria now coming to the morphology so morphologically retinoblastomas are nodular masses as we see here they fill up the globe nodular masses and usually seen in the posterior retina with small satellite lesions we can see some other lesions on the opposite side so hard and they can have lot of calcific deposits also so that is the morphology of retinoblastomas now coming to the microscopy so microscopically they have 
undifferentiated elements and differentiated elements. So, what do you mean by this undifferentiated and differentiated elements? Now, undifferentiated means the cells do not resemble anything. So, they are just small round cells. So, retinoblastoma is a small round blue cell tumor. So, when we look at the tumor, we just see sheets and sheets and sheets of this small cells. So, it is classified as one of the small round blue cell tumors. We hardly see any cytoplasm in these cells. So, they are small round cells, they have large hyperchromatic nuclei and hardly any cytoplasm. We can hardly see any cytoplasm. So, it is just bluish appearance when you look at the microscopy. So, that element is known as the undifferentiated component of retinoblastoma. Now coming to the differentiated elements. So when we are talking about differentiated elements, the most important element is the rosette and the characteristic rosette is the Flexner Wintersteiner rosette. Now what is this Flexner Wintersteiner rosette? Now rosette as the name suggests, it means like a rose. So we have cells which are arranged something like a rose in a flower shaped manner, something like that and they have nucleus which is placed centrally or basally and in a flexner wintersteiner rosette the cytoplasmic processes extend inwards. Now this is a characteristic flexner wintersteiner rosette. Now what are the other forms of rosettes? So other rosettes can be one is the true rosettes. The rosettes can be either true rosette or a false rosette. So, true rosettes are seen in ependymoma, that is a CNS tumor and the center of this rosette is a canal, is an empty canal, that is the ependymal canal. So, that is a true rosette. All the other rosettes are actually classified as false rosettes. So, what are the other rosettes? So, apart from these, we can have a Homer right rosette in which again the cells are arranged in the form of a rose and center we have a dense network of nerve fibers or neuropil. So, this type of rosette is known as a Homer right rosette and it can be seen in neuroblastomas or other blastemal tumors. Apart from these, we have a pseudo rosette, perivascular pseudo rosette. If the central region is a blood vessel and surrounding we have these cells which are arranged radially, this type of rosette is known as a perivascular pseudo rosette. Apart from this, we can have a neurocytic rosette, something like this, a large rosette which is arranged around a central area of blood vessels. That is a neurocytic rosette. So, in retinoblastomas, we have the Flexner Wintersteiner rosette. We can also have the perivascular pseudo rosette or even sometimes the Homer right rosette. Now, this is the picture of the retinoblastoma as we see, and this area is the undifferentiated small round blue cells, and here we have the rosettes. Now, apart from the differentiated and undifferentiated elements, retinoblastomas show focal zones of dystrophic calcification. Now, what is this dystrophic calcification? This is presence of calcification in dead tissues or in necrotic areas. So, that type of calcification is known as dystrophic calcification, which is commonly seen in retinoblastomas. So, coming to the spread and prognosis. So, it can spread to the optic nerve or to the subarachnoidal space and distant metastasis can occur to the brain, to the skull, bones or sometimes rarely even to the lymph nodes. Prognosis, sometimes the tumors tend to regress on its own but if it is untreated, it is fatal and spread to the optic nerve or the subarachnoid space is said to have a bad prognosis. Now, what are the treatment modalities? It can be chemotherapy, radiotherapy or enucleation in locally advanced tumors. So let us just summarize retinoblastomas. It is the most common primary intraocular malignancy of the childhood. Origin is the neuronal progenitor cells. Etiopathogenesis, it can be familial or sporadic in origin. And the most common is the mutation in the retinoblastoma gene. And remember the Knudsen's two-hit hypothesis here, which is very, very important. Clinical features, it can be poor vision, strabismus, the cat's eye reflex or the leukocoria. 
morphologically these are nodular masses they can have some amount of calcification and some small satellite lesions can be seen around the main tumor microscopically undifferentiated elements that is the sheets of small round blue cells or the differentiated elements that is the rosettes spread it can spread to the optic nerve arachnoid space even distant metastasis can be there prognosis depends on the stage of the disease if it is locally advanced will be the prognosis if it is going to the optic nerve or subarachnoid space said to be bad prognosis so that is about retinoblastomas